Hi everyone. In this video, we will discuss the problem find shortest safe route in a matrix. So the problem says that we'll be given a matrix with R rows and C columns and every cell will contain some value. So if the cell contains the value zero, so this means that the cell is having a landmine. Okay. And all the other cells are safe to traverse. So your task is to find the shortest route from any cell in the left column in the leftmost column to any cell in the rightmost column of the matrix. And you cannot move diagonally. You can only move. Uh, you cannot move diagonally. You can only move in the adjacent directions. That is if you are at a particular cell. So you can either go up. You can go towards the right direction. You can go downwards as well as you can go on the left. But there is one more constraint that since you know that we have been given uh, a matrix which is having landmine so which is having a cell as zero so if a cell is zero then you must avoid both the landmine and their adjacent cells as well so if you are at like if there is a cell zero uh, if there is a cell which is having value as zero then all the cells which are on the right left up and down direction adjacent they should be avoided they should not be taken in your path this is one very important thing here Okay, so if you will see this test case, so here the output comes out to be six. Why? Because suppose that if you will, if you're going to start, so let's say you will start from uh, the left more, uh, like uh, the third one in the leftmost column. So if you start from here, so let me just qu quickly clear this up. So suppose that if you have this matrix, so the problem says that you have to start from any of these cells that I have highlighted with the black color. Okay, so you have to start from any of the cells in the leftmost column and then you have to reach any of the cell that is there in the rightmost column. Okay, this is what the problem says. So you are allowed to move only in four directions and again as I said, if a cell is zero, then you cannot do what you cannot move on the, like if, if there is a cell which is zero, then even if the other cells adjacent to it in the four directions are one, you should avoid them. So they are also a red flag for you. So you can do what you can also mark them as zero. How you would do that? So basically for doing that, you can first of all run a loop. Okay. And you can iterate for all the adjacent directions for a particular cell, which is zero. And then you can mark them, let's say as two. And then after the traversal is over, uh, let's say you can mark them as uh, zero, right? So that is how you can uh, proceed for it. So if you will see this problem, so obviously, first of all, you can start from this one. Okay. Uh, that is first step. Then after that, you can move to next one here. Then after that, you can move to this one. And then uh, after that, you can move uh, one step up and then here and then here. So basically one, then uh, two, then three, then four, and then five. And so total six will be the count of the path. Okay, and that is indicated in bold. Now, basically for solving this problem, the very first thing that we need to understand is there are several steps for solving this problem. The very first step that is there is that we need to close our choices for cer certain cells, right? So if a cell is zero, so all the cells that are adjacent to it on the left, right, top and bottom directions, they will be blocked. They will not be considered. So that is why what you need to do is you need to run a loop and in all the four directions, whatever uh, value is there, if the value is suppose uh, one, then you will mark them as two. Okay, so you will do this. And then after the traversal is over for, uh, for throughout the cell, then whichever cells have been marked as two, you will mark them as zero indicating that they are landmines. Okay, this is what you can try to do first. So this, this will be the first step that you have to uh, see that which other cells are there that are restricted for you that are not safe for you and once that is done so if we have to find the shortest path so which algorithm comes to our mind when we have to find the shortest path in a graph where every movement will take one unit of weight or one unit of cost so basically for that you have to use the breadth first search algorithm because the breadth first search algorithm does what it helps you to find the shortest path in a graph or in a matrix which is having adjacent uh, weights or the adjacent movement cost as one that is unit cost for every movement okay so this is one very important thing now if you have to solve this problem so how can you run in all the four directions would you always check if you are suppose at a particular cell i comma j so would you always check i minus one see if you are at a cell i comma j and that cell is zero suppose right or if you are at a i comma j cell in general so for going up will you always do i minus one j Will you do, uh, if you're going down, will you do I plus one J? 
because if you're going down you your row is increasing if you're going on the right so will you do i comma j plus one if you're going on the left so will you do i comma j minus one no because if you will write this always on your own if you're every time going to write i minus one comma j i comma j plus one i plus one comma j and i comma j minus one then this is going to be redundant so that is why what you can do is you can use the concept of dx and dy now what does that mean so suppose that if you are at a particular cell let's name that cell as x comma y if you want okay so if you're going up so obviously that will be x minus 1 comma y because you are going one row up so the row decreases if you're going down so one row down so it will be x plus 1 comma y if you're going on the right so that will be x comma y plus 1 and if you're going on the left so it will be nothing but x comma y minus 1 because you're going one step on the leftward row okay this is the thing now what you can do is if you have to decide what is the new x and the new y so we all know that there is a concept of dx and dy that is the small change in x and y okay so what we can do is we can declare a dx uh, array okay and we can declare a dy array or both of size 4 now what will happen is if you uh, want to see so firstly i am marking uh, this as 0 and this as minus 0 minus 1 and then 0 so basically suppose if i had to go up so understand this thing if i had to go up so what with respect to the current x what is the small change in the x x is decreasing by 1 so that is why i have i have indicated dx value as minus 1 if i am going up is there any change in the y? No, the y remains same. So that is why I have marked dy as 0. If I'm going downwards, then the x is increasing by 1. So I'll say dx will be 1 and y is the same. So I'll say dy will be 0. Okay, then after that, if I'm going on the left side, so x is the same. So x dx would be 0 because there is no change in x and the dy would be what? dy would be minus 1 because at that cell, uh, like uh, you are going on the left. So 1... Uh, uh, value is decreasing one column is decreasing on the left side if you're going on the right so there is no change in the x and then after that if you're going uh, on the right so basically y increases so the y coordinate increases so there's a change small change in y that is plus one so we'll mark this as plus one okay now this helps you to do what if you will iterate in this particular dx dy array and you see this is zero this is one this is two this is three so dx of zero uh, and dy of zero will tell you the small change in uh, x and y for that particular direction dx of 1 uh, x plus dx of uh, 1 and x plus dx of uh, dy of 1 would tell you about the new x and the new y so basically now what you can do is you can basically simply run a loop uh, which will be running from uh, let's say k start from 0 till k is let's say less than 4 and k plus plus and then what you can say here is that the new x would be nothing but the current x plus the small change in the x so dx of k and the new y would be what new y would be nothing but the y plus the dy of k so this is how you can change and this will be easily done otherwise if you remember so you had to write what you had to write x minus 1 comma y x plus 1 comma y x comma y plus 1 x comma y minus 1 which would have been very difficult and tedious task so we have avoided this particular task here i hope this makes a lot of sense okay so basically this is how you can avoid now let's try and implement the code so that we can understand better if there are any things that we need to uh, see on the board so i'll try to explain them throughout okay so first of all what we'll be doing is first of all considering all the cells that are zero so we'll be trying to iterate uh, on all the four sides of them and we'll mark their adjacent cell as blocked okay so the first target that will be there is that we have will take the matrix row and column so the number of rows will be uh, n is equal to mat dot size and the number of columns would be mat of 0 dot size why we do mat of 0 dot size for the column because uh, whenever we have to like because mat of 0 itself behaves like a 1d array right so the number of columns or the column length would be nothing but mat of 0 dot size because mat of 0 itself is an array which is uh, in this horizontal direction and that tells me about the length of the column here okay once that is done so what i need to do i need to declare a dx array okay and that dx array will be of size 4 and i can say that will be nothing but let's say minus 1 then 1 then what 0 comma 0 okay and then after this uh, what you need to do is you need to declare a dy array which will be of size 4 and it will be basically what 0 comma 0 comma minus 1 let's say comma 1 okay now after this after i have declared the dx and the dy array so i'll iterate in this matrix so i'll say i start from 0 i is uh, lesser than n then i'll do an i plus plus and then after this what we will do here is we'll say that uh, j starts from 0 j is lesser than m and then we'll do a j plus plus and then after this what we will do is we will check if the matrix of ij 
is equal equal to zero so if the current cell is basically zero then this means that i have to iterate in all the four directions of this cell so for that i can use a k loop so k starts from zero k is less than four k plus plus and then the new x would be what guys the new x would be x plus uh, uh, the new x would be the i plus uh, dx of k and the new y would be what the new y would be nothing but uh, j plus uh, dy of uh, k and then once that is done so i will check that if it is valid or not so if the new x is greater than or equal to zero okay and the new x is lesser than n and the new y is greater than or equal to zero and the new y is lesser than m so if it is lying inside the limit then if it is a valid cell then i will say that i will do what and at the same time i will check that if that cell is what let's say and and the mat of uh, that new x new y cell if it's equal to one so if it is equal to one then it's my responsibility to mark it as what to mark it as uh, zero to mark it as blocked basically so i can mark it as zero or let's say i can mark it as minus one also because what i'm thinking is that whichever cells uh, suppose that what i will think is that whichever cell are zero okay so which cells i can think about as block so the cells which i can think about it as block cells the cells which are having value zero and value minus one also okay so this is how i can try to do it so what i can do here is i can mark the new x and the new y as minus one so basically these are the adjacent minus one cells uh, are con uh, are those cells which are adjacent to the cells which are having value as zero and they should also be marked as unsafe by me so that is why i'm using a different value that is minus one for all of them okay now after this is done then what we need to do here is we need to declare a queue of pair int comma int let's say q and then after this what we will do here is we'll iterate in this grid once again so we'll say that uh, i will start from zero okay and then i is less than n then we'll do i plus plus now i is less than n why we are uh, doing this thing because we have to for the zeroth column we have to iterate on all the rows because what is our starting point remember the starting point like if this grid is given here so this can be your starting point 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 right so all of these cells should be inserted so basically zero comma uh i you can say right so that is why we need to insert all of them as the starting position so what we will do here is we'll run uh i is lesser than n and then after that what are we are going to check is we are going to check uh what we are going to check that if the matrix of zero so in if in the zero uh, like uh, if the matrix of i zero basically if uh, if uh, what happens let me just check if i've written it wrongly so basically this will be i comma zero why because the rows are changing and the column is the zeroth column only that will be the zeroth column will be the starting column the leftmost column okay so what we are going to check here is we are going to check that if the mat of i zero is equal equal to one uh, okay so if it is one then what you will do is uh if it is one so this means this can be your starting point so if it if it can be your starting point then you will say that inside your queue you are going to push what you're going to push the pairs so here uh not only i want to insert this thing so what i will do is i'll declare another pair pair of in comma int so what i will what i want to do here is i want to store the distance covered so far as well as i want to store the current x and the y coordinate inside the queue so what we will do here is we will insert the distance as zero and the cell as what the cell would be nothing but one comma zero uh, sorry i comma zero because this is the i row and the z column so i have uh, i have passed this and also uh, if i have visited a particular cell so i don't want to visit it again so that is why i'll mark the visit of i zero as one so for that let me just declare a visited array outside this particular loop as well. So what I will do is I will declare a visited array. So let's say uh, we will declare a vector of vector int. And then uh, let's say vector of vector int, let's say visited. And then after this, we can define n comma vector int m comma 0 so initially we are marking this particular visited uh, visited 2d array as 0 
okay and then whichever cells we visit we will mark them as one then after this our responsibility is to mark initially the answer as int max indicating that it is not possible to reach okay because if the answer still remains int max at the end so it will indicate that it was not possible to reach then we'll iterate until when while the queue size is greater than zero or until the time the queue is empty till that point of time we'll plan to iterate and then what we will do here is we'll say that the distance is nothing but what the distance is nothing but q dot front dot first because the first element is the distance okay and then after that what is the x coordinate so the x coordinate is nothing but uh, the q dot front dot second dot first because uh, in the second part uh, i'm storing uh, two coordinates that is x and y so it has two parts right the first and the second so second has two parts because in the second i'm storing the coordinate x and y so what i'll do here is uh, x i can access by doing q dot uh, front dot second dot first and then i can uh, get the y coordinate how like i can do uh, nothing but q dot front dot second dot second okay then because the coordinates are stored in the second part of the pair okay so that is why we are doing this now once we have done this then what we need to do is we need to pop this particular pair outside the queue and now once we have popped this pair outside the queue so we have to check what we have to check is that if we have reached the last column or not so if y is equal to m minus 1 so if we have reached the last column then in that case what we can do here guys if we have reached the last column then we will simply return nothing but what if we have reached the last column then we will return the distance covered so far plus 1 okay because one more uh, chance would be taken so that is why we will we'll simply return this otherwise if that is not the last uh, cell and uh, it is and this cell still had the value one so then what i need to do is i need to iterate in the four directions and uh, if i can move uh, if the adjacent cells are one and they are not visited so i need to uh, i need to visit them okay this is what we need to do and push them inside the queue as well so we will check the new x is equal to current x plus uh, dx of k and the new y would be what the new y would be nothing but the current y plus uh, the dy of k and once we have got this so if it happens guys that the new x is greater or equal to zero so if the uh, x coordinate is valid uh, okay if the x coordinate the new x coordinate that we are getting if it is valid and the y coordinate is also valid okay and at the same time what if this cell has not been visited and the has the value as one so you can say that and the visited of the new x and the new y cell is uh, zero so if it is not visited and at the same time the matrix value at this particular cell at, is what it is one then what we need to do here is if the matrix value is one then what we will do here is we will say that visited of the new x and the new y will be equal to one okay and then so we'll mark it as visited and then we'll push it inside the queue so we'll say that the distance would be nothing but the distance uh, covered so far plus one for reaching this particular cell okay and then after that uh we'll insert the new x and the new y coordinate here okay once this is done then after that we'll come out of the loop and in the end what happens is if the answer is equal to equal to int max so basically if in the end the answer is still infinity so this means that the answer was not possible it was not possible to reach from the leftmost column any of the leftmost column to the, any of the rightmost column so that is why we will return minus one indicating that it's not possible okay now let us try and compile this code to check if there is any compilation mistake that i have made else the logic is correct okay so it says that uh, int was not declared properly so let us quickly check this yes so here we have not declared the in properly now it has been declared properly and other than this i have to comment the block cell uh, that i wrote and then apart from this it is saying that i was not declared we have fixed this now in the line number 21 also same issue had happened so i guess now it is fine let's now try and compile this to check if there are any mistakes Yes, so we have got one more mistake that is we are pushing. So whenever we are pushing, so I have to push this in form of a pair. Okay, so this was one basic mistake. Now let's try and compile it again to check what is happening. So my output is one less compared to the output that was expected by them. So possibly we might have made some mistake somewhere while writing the code. 
because our distance is uh, one less compared to theirs so whenever the y becomes equal to m minus one that is when we return distance plus one as the answer okay so we have got the distance from the front of the queue let's do one thing instead of this if i do what if uh, i can store the answer as distance plus one and then we simply break away so al although this will make no change but if the answer is still infinity then we'll return this thing else what we'll return is we'll return the actual minimum distance that is the answer now let's try and compile it and check if this is working fine or not okay so still we are giving a random answer as output so answer is equal to distance plus one and then we break away so we need to go through this code again somewhere we might have made some mistakes so let's quickly iterate through this code once again so we have uh, n and then m and then after that we are iterating from j starts from zero till j is lesser than uh, m uh, okay and then after this if the ij cell is equal to zero then we are iterating for k loop and then we have the new x and the new y so if the new x and the new y are under control and uh, at the same time the matrix value at this new cell new y is one then we are marking it as minus one okay now once we are done with that then i have declared a visited array which is uh, having n cross m size and everything is zero initially then after that inside the queue what i'm doing is if the i comma zero cell okay so if it is equal to one then what i'm doing is i'm pushing zero comma i comma zero and v of i zero i'm marking as one then i've initialized my answer as uh, int max then the distance is q dot from dot first so we have got everything correct here and after that uh, the column value will be m minus one then after this what we have done here is we have the new x and the new y so if the new x and the new y are under control and the visited uh, the cell is not visited at the same time and the new x and the new y uh, cell are having the value as one then we mark that cell as visited and then after that we push distance plus one and then the new x and the new y and at the end we check if the answer is still still it is int max then we return minus one else we return the answer so let's now try and compile it again to check what is happening here so still there is some kind of mistake that we might have made okay so firstly we have got uh, let's check this again what can be the possible error so here we have the dx and the dy minus one minus one then we have a vector declared as well okay so let me just do this although this would not make any difference but uh, let's see okay so i found out the issue the issue was basically in the comparison that i had written so return the answer okay so basically the issue was in this line when i was comparing here so i should have written the new x is greater or equal to zero okay now it would work fine in the line number 35 i had made the mistake okay now it works fine let's try and submit this code to check if it is getting accepted or not it should so you can clearly see that the code got accepted i hope that you are clear with the logic of this problem and the time complexity would be nothing but n cross m since in the worst case we'd be iterating almost throughout the grid. I hope that you have understood this problem. Thank you for watching this video guys. Keep coding.